Mayada. Hello, ladies and gents, family and friends. Welcome back to another video. This is your friend, Dr. Oduro. Today, I have Dr. Henry Johnson. Originally from Ghana, uh, born and raised in a small city called Takradi. Um, so I got my uh, farm D about three years ago. So I've been practicing as a pharmacist for almost two and a half years now. Uh, it's been a, it's been quite a journey, and you know I'm here to talk to my big bro. You know, have some few discussions about meds and uh, talk about some of the things we love about you know being a pharmacist and pharmacy in general. Today, I would like us to talk about PPIs, okay. potent pump inhibitors. Okay. So an example is omeprazole. Yes. Uh, for viewers, if you want to see this, this is an over-the-counter. Yep. Um, and you can get it without any prescription. And there are several medications that are under PPIs or proton pump inhibitors. Yes. So a lot of people, first of all, obviously, when we're talking about a medication, we want to start by talking about what the medication is for. Uh, and as a pharmacist, we we are more in tune with mechanism of action. When I say mechanism of action, essentially means how the medication works. Uh, so this is one of the very key uh, medications that has a very unique and specific way of working. Um, so the way it works essentially is that there is a, um, without getting too medical, it blocks a pump uh, in the stomach that helps prevent uh, acid from getting into the stomach. Because all the, uh, for most people, they take the medication for either heart burns, indigestion, most of the time, and for GERD. Um, and there are specific uh, conditions where people would take a PPI. So depending on what you're taking it for, it essentially works the same. So it's blocking an H um, hydrogen potassium uh, channel that produces some sort of acid or blocks the acid from getting to the stomach, uh, in essence. That's the general summary of it. Um, so for most people, they would take the medication or go to the pharmacy and you know talk to the pharmacist about, hey, I have a heartburn, what can I take? And almost always, it's one of these. Um, but I guess the, the point here today is to you know go over some of the key things you need to look out for, even though it helps with your heartburns and the GERD and all that stuff, there are certain things that you need to pay attention to as well. Because as good as it is, there are certain things that you need to uh, and I'm pretty sure we'll get to that. Um, certain things that you need to look out for when you're on it. So this about the mechanism of action inhibiting the um, hydrogen potassium ATPase. So what are some of the indications? Of heart bands, uh, people with GERD. This H. pylori is one mm -hmm. of them. Yep, eradication of H. pylori. Yes, exactly. Yep. Um, there's mostly heart burns, indigestion, and that's when most people just grab this over the counter. Yeah, that's right. So, as Dr. Johnson said, it can be used for education of H. pylori, it can be used for GERD, that's ga gastroesophageal reflux, reflux disease, disease yeah. and peptic ulcer, yeah. uh, peptic ulcer disease. Yeah. Can you tell us, uh, should we take this medication with food or without food? Yeah, I mean, it works best if you do it that way because of essentially how it works. Um, the whole point is you're trying to prepare your stomach to be able to receive food in such a way that uh, it doesn't uh, cause a reflux. So if you take it 30 minutes before, usually before you eat anything, it, it works very well uh, and it, it doesn't defeat the purpose or the point of taking the medication. So ideally, you want to take it without food, ideally. Thank you. So as Dr. Johnson said, before you take your proton pump inhibitor or your omeprazole, your lansoprazole, uh, someprazole, pantoprazole, uh, dexlansoprazole. All the zoles. All the zoles. <laughs> and not the fluconazole. Well, not the fluconazole. Yeah, not that. <laughs> not that one. <laughs> then you have to wait 30 to 60 minutes before you eat so yes. the medication can work well. Exactly. So um, well, one question. Can you tell us some of the side effects? Well, of yeah. um, these medications because yeah. every medication has a side effect exactly. even too much of water causes exactly. something exactly. too much of food so exactly. can you give us a few side yeah. effects so uh, i want to say some of the side effects but uh, let me start with this preamble so 
because the medication is over the counter, people know it's for heartburns, people know it's for indigestion. So whenever they have some sort of indigestion, they just grab it and then they stay on it and they don't stop taking it. Um, and when that happens, that leads to some of the side effects we're gonna talk about. The major one that I personally um, have encountered is the CIDF, um, where you're, there's, you're blocking, um, the medication is blocking all the acid, right? So it's gonna leave room for the stomach of bacteria to grow in the stomach. So the other thing too is that it can decrease your body's ability to absorb magnesium which is going to cause hypomagnesemia, um, which is one of the things that I, you know, I, I look at a lot. Um, and I'll let the doc, uh, Dr. Odua uh, speak about some of them for you too. Yeah, so as Dr. Johnson said, when you take this long term, when if you take it short term, um, you might not, it might not surface. Everybody yeah. is different, yeah. um, by the way. But when you take it three months or more, some people were a year, yeah. then it can affect the absorption of minerals and vitamins, exactly. like vitamin B12, calcium, some people have a bone fracture, yeah. and then we have magnesium yeah. getting low. And the yeah. only way we can see you have hypomagnesemia will be some, the labs. you know, the lab work, yeah. yeah, the lab work to see the vitamin B12 levels. Yeah. How long, for example, if I buy um, <laughs> over the counter, yeah. On Miprazole, oh, let's say I'm a lame person yeah. and I'm taking it. I read that when you take this, you should take it for a maximum of 14, 14 days, days within a four month period. Yes. Why is that so? Uh, Why do I have to go and see the doctor before I have to be on it for, you know, for six months or for a month or for whatever the doctor deem it right? Yeah. That I can make that decision, but I have to take it up to. You know, 14 days yes. every, I mean, four months. Every so it's like months. every four times 30, so every 120 days, I can take just 14 days of this. Yeah. Why? So, Dr. Johnson? The, the key thing for me is the more you take it, like I, I kind of alluded to earlier, the more, you, the longer you are on it for, the more susceptible you're, you know, you're putting your body in a position where you're most likely going to get some of these side effects that we mentioned earlier. So, ideally, I think because one of the key things, one of the major reasons why people actually stay on it longer is because of how accessible it is. Because if they don't feel the need to consult a doctor uh, to be on it long term. Now, some of the indications that we mentioned earlier is for short term use only, right? So heartburns, indigestion, you don't want to be on it long term since the, those conditions eventually will resolve on its own. But if you're going through heartburns and uh, indigestion extensively, that means that there's something, there's an underlying issue that requires you to be, uh, to see the doctor for uh, appropriate consultation in order to be on it long term. Um, you know, some some people have GERD, like serious GERD that requires them to be on the medication. Uh, some people also have uh, some sort of uh, inflammable uh, bowel syndrome that require them to be on this and certain antibiotics as well. So, you know, that goes to the point of, you know, if you have to be in it longer, then there's an underlying issue that you need to go see the doctor about. And that's the key reason why you stay on it short term. Uh, talk to the doctor if you have to be on it longer or if your symptoms are still persistent, then you know, that, that's a sign for you to, hey, I got to go see my doctor and make sure, you know, there's nothing else going on. You know, there's no underlying issue. It's not just the one symptom that I'm trying to resolve. And that's probably one of the major reasons why you should be on it short term or consult that approach to make sure that you know you're being taken care of properly. Yeah, thank you, Dr. Johnson. As Dr. Johnson said, um, it's good when you buy over the counter to be on it short term. Yeah. And if we want to be on it long term, you know, the doctor's office, they do monitor you. They draw yeah. your blood so they can see if your magnesium is getting low, your calcium is getting low, yeah. and if they need to wean you of it or if they need to actually you know supplement you with yeah. you know vitamin b12 or the magnesium then they will do that but if you are doing that on your own how would you be able to know if your magnesium is getting low exactly. or your vitamin b12 is getting low and then yeah. you can get anemia you can yeah. be susceptible to several you diseases. Know, diseases bone yeah. fractures exactly. especially for the old people yeah. you know falling down breaking bones yeah. you don't want to start taking a medication to treat something and then you end up 
getting another thing where you have to buy more medication to treat. So just do the right thing the right way, and then you know everything else should fix itself. So. And uh, the, Doctor um, Johnson, do you remember when we were in school? Sometimes they tell us that they have to raise their pillow and yeah. avoid certain foods exactly. that trigger. Exactly. So you know, have professionals like pharmacists, uh, medical doctors, nurse practitioners, PAs can advise you on set things yeah. by you know you voluntarily getting that medication you don't even know you know raising the, your pillow yeah and what we're saying is it's not always you grabbing this over the counter to help solve the situation sometimes there's certain things that you can do uh like uh dr joe just said where you can essentially you know avoid using some of the i mean if you have to be on it you have to be on it but there are other ways all the things that you can do uh, and some sometimes you, you know you're eating this spicy food this is going to cause hot burns for you in the middle of the night and you still go ahead and eat it why because you have omeprazole that is just wrong <laughs> that is just wrong so that's my friend <laughs> not you i know some people do it too they're like <laughs> yeah. you know there's medication yeah. for it so i will eat that stick and take cholesterol yeah. medicine yeah See, that's, that's just it's wrong but you know we're we're human so you know we do what we do but it's our our uh uh, obligation to tell you some of these things here and then you know you make the best decision for yourself obviously but with the best resource available to you yeah well, thank you dr johnson is there anything any shout out anything you want to say as a wrap up to um, our meeting today to my audience and to yeah. everyone out there yeah um i'll say this um we as pharmacists are you know here to serve as much as we possibly can um, we are all learning at the end of the day and uh, I feel like it's important that if you have any questions about anything um, we don't we're the most accessible healthcare personnel there is so just come to the pharmacy talk to any of us with any questions and even if we don't have the answers right away we know how to get the answers for you so you know don't don't just go into the pharmacy and just guess on any of the counter medication and start taking it I've had a lot of people come to pharmacy trying to find medications for their kids uh, without knowing essentially how to give the medication and they just grab the meds and then just go without thinking about the repercussions. So we are here to help, we're here to serve. Come to the pharmacy, whatever pharmacy, it doesn't matter which one. <laughs> we're not promoting any specific pharmacy, but we're promoting pharmacists, that's what we're doing here. So whatever the case is, just see your closest pharmacist and we can, we can always help you. Thank you. Until then, stay positive, stay inventive, and stay effective. Thank you for your time. Have a great day. Absolutely. Bye-bye.